Millions of dead bodies litter mass graves, bodies that had become living skeletons with bones begging to break through the skin. Sunken eyes, puffed out stomachs, and wispy thin hair inhabited the USSR. Meanwhile, people in many countries joyously enjoyed food like butter, vegetables, and bread stamped with the Soviet seal. Such things seem unthinkable, but this is the truth of the Holodomor, the genocide of the Ukrainian people, one of the world's deadliest genocides, and subsequently, the one most forgotten. The USSR's second dictator was born on December 18, 1878 as Yosef Vissarinovich Djugashvili, later changing his name to Stalin as it meant Man of Steel in Russian. Growing up poor, Stalin developed an unquenchable thirst for power, transforming the Soviet from a peasant society to an unstoppable military and industrial power. As a young man, Stalin became increasingly interested in revolutionary politics, joining the Bolsheviks, a military wing of the Marxist movement led by Vladimir Lenin. By the time of Lenin's death in 1912, Stalin had already started to move up in the ranks of the Communist Party. He was able to defeat all of his rivals and become the Soviet Union's next most powerful leader. In 1922, Ukraine became part of the Union of Soviet Socialist Republics as one of the original republics and would not regain its independence until the early 90s. The Ukrainians were a fiercely passionate group and refused to succumb to the communist ways of the USSR, and the USSR, feeling the pressure, originally let them self-govern. However, once Stalin came along, this all changed. But the Ukrainians, they were a tough bunch, and the Kulaks would be the natural opposition to any revolution that could possibly rise up against the Soviet Union, and Stalin knew this very well. Stalin saw the Ukrainians as a threat to his grand scheme of collectivization, and saw it necessary to eliminate them completely, starting with the Kulaks. And so in the beginning of 1929, Stalin held true to his plan and launched a new policy targeted against the Kulaks. Stalin had developed the five-year plan for the Soviet Union, which he believed would help him achieve a status as an industrial superpower. It involved the government having absolute control over the nation's economy and a plan for collectivization. Stalin had big plans for the USSR and desperately needed some way to increase farm capital to see his dreams of industrialization realized. Ukraine was the breadbasket of Europe and it simply made sense to Stalin to increase agriculture exports in order to find new factories. Stalin's collectivization plan seemed harmless at first, but it isn't easy to convince farmers to start producing double or triple the amount of crops they are already struggling to harvest. Stalin didn't have time and expropriated land from the Ukrainians in order to maximize agricultural export potential. Soon, state farms became standard and Moscow implemented quotas that were quadrupled the amount of grain produced in the best years prior to the genocide. Collective farms owned by the Soviet state were considered sacred and inviolate. If farmers complained about the unreasonable quotas, they were punished, either by death or starvation. I don't want to remember the famine because it was so terrible. I was one of the few children who went to school during the famine, but I remember not being able to concentrate because I was so hungry. There was nothing for me at home, there was nothing for me at school. I remember one year when I was very little, my brother and me tore the bark off of trees and my mother dried it and pounded it, mixing it with flour and that's what we ate because there was nothing else. The food produced at the collective farms was owned by the state and was directly exported to Moscow or the closest industrial centers to be exported abroad for profit. The workers at these farms received none of the profits as all the money was being invested into the USSR's economy. There was no time for Stalin to be worrying about the health of his subjects as long as crops were being produced in amounts deemed acceptable by him. Food essentially became a black market. Anyone found in possession of food of any sort was subject to punishment by execution or imprisonment of up to 10 years. The KVPD, the Soviet secret police, took their duties very seriously. Having even one potato could earn you up to 10 years in a prison. Little children searching the food on the ground weren't exempt and were often shot and killed in the pursuit for food. It was easy for the secret police because they didn't see the Ukrainians as people. During the famine, my neighbor was building a new house for his family. In the construction, 
he built one wall thicker than the other because it was actually two walls with a crawl space between them. And in the crawl space, he would store corn, grain, potatoes, whatever he had. When the police came by to inspect the construction, they wanted to know why one wall was thicker than all the rest. My neighbor said it was because he made a mistake, but they didn't believe him. Last I heard of them was that they had been deported to Siberia. All I know was that it was dangerous to try and hide food. I was very young during the famine, so I don't recall much. But I do remember one day very clearly. The police dragged three young women who were putting up a big fuss out of the village one morning. I tried to listen to the crowds to find out why they were being treated so badly, and all I could gather is that they had stuffed cobs of corn in their pockets. And I can't understand why it was such a big deal. I found out later that each of them were sentenced to three years in prison, all because they wanted to eat. Under Stalin's five-year plan, the Soviet Union did grow exponentially in terms of industrialization and economics, but only at the hands of its people suffering. It is estimated that between 7 and 10 million people died in the Haldemar. There were so many dead bodies, quite literally starved to death. So the KVPD would go around every day collecting the bodies and bringing them to mass graves. They would park a cart out in the street and collect the dead from the homes. Sometimes they even dragged off the severely ill or half-dead bodies simply because they couldn't be bothered to come back the next day. We even have some accounts of these people who were tossed into sardine-style graves, crawling out in the middle of the night and escaping back to their homes, much to the surprise of their loved ones. Holodomor by Mike Fedu. The year and this horror still haunts my nights. The year 33, I was six, I saw fright. On the land, in our hearts, and in some promise we knew, gardens strive on the hills where the oracle leaves grew. On the Lenin, they, stay, they say, Tsars were shot, terror reign, smash the patrons, the magnates and vojois, take aim. With a shrill, insane voice, Joseph Stalin proclaimed, cut them down, start the kulaks who grew all the grain. Arise, all you downtrodden and hungry, you must. Free land we will give you, this is our holy trust. And all you stores to the commune called Hosp, or we'll drive you, we will grind you to the Siberian dust. The first raid came, and the sheds were all empty. In sacks, wheat was empty to the commune farm. In the second requisition, our hope lay there empty, and then third, like our urns were lie broken, not a sound. In our gloom, we did eat what we could, dogs, cats, uh, for the glory of the five-year plan, and the rats. In our village, they hid all the children, don't cry. Mother, play with the children. Please, children, don't die. How could it happen in Ukraine, let us ask. As you know, our Ukraine was the world's great breadbasket. Who saw the truth? Who would tell? Where, the, where were you on that hell? In silent death, death range, and the hunger did swell. All, in all our future, our pure promise, our flowers lie dead. In the streets, bring our dead where you were to will in the streets, bring your dead where you too will lay now. On a land in, in our hearts, no more freedom we knew. On a hilltops lay dead where the oracles once grew. In the, co in the communes, farms, wages were counted by sinners. Chekas danced, drank, and spat, cleared their pistols, and ate dinners. With their na re Nagan's revolvers, they loyally they drew through nape of our necks the great nations they slew. slew. I saw all this horror up close, dark and clear, around the world, near and far, all my children, please hear. Hold my hand as we pray for the Holodomor. Holod means the fourth hunger, let there be no more. <laughs>